So do I pivot left or do I pivot right? Maybe I have to sweep. What do you think? What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video we're going to have a closer look at the center to edge aiming system otherwise known as CTE. Now, I'd like to thank everybody for all the support that I got on the first video that I did covering the CTE aiming system. Dr. Dave was nice enough to share my video on his webpage where variations of the CTE aiming system are covered and I'll provide a link in the description below for that page and I even found my video on the AZ Billiards forum that I'll also provide a link in the description. Now since then, I've studied the system a little bit more and I've learned a couple of new things that I'd like to share with everybody that's actually going to have some changes from the first video that I did. So let's get started. So first, let's review those five aiming spots because nothing has changed here. Now when we're cutting a ball to the left, the three middle aiming spots are labeled A, B, and C. Where A is used for cut angles that are around 15 degrees, which is actually equivalent to a three-quarter ball hit. B is used for cut angles that are around 30 degrees, which is also equivalent to a half ball hit. And then C is used for cut angles around 45 degrees, and that's equivalent to a quarter ball hit. Now when you're cutting a ball to the right, I change the order of the aiming spots to C, B, and A just so that they can refer to the same cut angles. So when cutting to the right, a is still used for cut angles that are around 15 degrees and is still equivalent to a three-quarter ball hit. B doesn't change and is still used for cut angles around 30 degrees or a half ball hit. And C is still used for cut angles around 45 degrees or a quarter ball hit. And lastly, we have the two outside aiming spots that are used for cut angles that range from about 60 degrees all the way up to about 80 to 85 degrees. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the starting position of your cue to the cue ball because that has some changes. In my last video, I said that you should position your cue one full tip to the left or right of center of the cue ball depending upon the direction of your cut. In other words, if you were cutting a ball to the right, you would position your cue one full tip to the right of center of the cue ball aiming at one of the aiming spots and then moving your grip hand away from your body so that the cue can pivot to the left back to the center of the cue ball. And then if you were going to cut a ball to the left, you would position your cue one full tip to the left of center, aiming at one of the aiming spots, and then moving your grip hand closer to your body so that your cue can pivot right to the center of the cue ball. This always means that we were pivoting away from the direction of the cut, and that's also referred to as an outside pivot. Now the change that we're going to make to the starting position of the cue to the cue ball is going to be half a tip to the left or right of center of the cue ball. But this time, it's not going to be based on the direction of the cut. It's going to be based on whether you want the cue ball to hit the object ball a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. Now what I mean by that is, let's say for example we're going to cut a ball to the right. If we position our cue half a tip to the right of center of the cue ball and then pivot to the left, we're going to cause the cue ball to actually hit the object ball a little bit thinner. And then if we start the position of our cue half a tip to the left of center and then pivot right, we're going to cause the cue ball to hit the object ball a little bit thicker. And then much like the opposite, if we're cutting a ball to the left and we start our cue half a tip to the left of center and then pivot right, we're going to cause the cue ball to hit the object ball thinner. And then if we start half a tip to the right of center of the cue ball and then pivot left, we're going to cause the cue ball to hit the object ball a little bit thicker. So now we have another pivot direction which is actually going towards the angle of the cut which is referred to as an inside pivot. And it's my understanding that these two pivot directions is what allows the CTE aiming system to cover ranges of angles using those aiming spots as starting points. The next thing I'd like to talk about is I want to try to answer a question that's been asked a couple of times. 
And that is, what is the difference between a pivot and a sweep? And from what I can tell, they're practically the same thing with just one minor difference. Now with a pivot, you have two movements. Your first movement is to start your cue at that half tip offset that I mentioned, whether it's to the right of center or to the left of center before you pivot your cue back to the center of the cue ball. Now what I want you to take note of here is where I actually placed my bridge hand on the table. Do note that it's not directly behind the center of the cue ball. It's also at that half tip offset, whether it's on the left side or whether it's on the right side before I pivot the cue. Now the reason why I want you to know that is because when you're going to do a sweep, you're going to do one continuous movement, meaning that as your bridge hand is coming down onto the table to be at that half tip offset, your grip hand is going to move at the same time and cause the tip of your cue to start at the center of the cue ball rather than at the half tip offset. So if I'm going to try to sweep from left to center, this is what it's going to look like. My bridge hand is going to come down onto the table at the half tip offset and my grip hand moves at the same time and you can see the tip of my cue is automatically at the center of the cue ball. Let's look at that one more time. As my bridge hand comes down onto the table to be at the half tip offset, my grip hand moves at the same time and the tip of my cue starts at the center of the cue ball. And this is what it looks like to sweep from right to center. As my bridge hand comes in to be a half tip offset to the right of the center of the cue ball, my grip hand is going to move at the same time and the tip of my cue will be at the center of the cue ball. Now some of y'all might wonder why I didn't sweep like this since I'm sweeping from right to center. Why doesn't my cue come in from the right to be at that half tip offset and then move my grip hand at the same time to be at the center of the cue ball? As a right handed player, that movement just doesn't feel very natural to me. What feels natural to me is to come in from the left, placing my bridge hand down at that half tip offset and then moving my grip hand at the same time to look something like this. Rather than coming in from the right to still accomplish the same thing. Now what I'm going to tell you though is do what is most comfortable for you. Whether it's sweeping from the left to the right or sweeping from the right to the left. Always remembering that the bridge hand is a half tip offset to the right of the center of the cue ball and the grip hand moves at the same time so that the tip of the cue is at the center of the cue ball. And the last thing I'd like to talk about before I start demonstrating shots is how you want to try to line up the cue ball to the object ball when you're aiming. Now what we have here is a straight on zero degree hit where the center of the cue ball is lined up with the center of the object ball. Now when you're using the CTE aiming system, depending upon what direction you're going to cut the object ball in, you always start with the center of the cue ball lined up to the outside edge of the object ball from the direction of the cut. For example, if we're going to cut this ball to the left, we first line up the center of the cue ball to the right edge of the object ball. And that's going to look something like this. Then you want to line up the inside edge of the cue ball to one of the three middle aiming spots depending upon what your cut angle is. And as you can see here, when we line up the center of the cue ball to the outside edge of the object ball, we can see that the inside edge of the cue ball is automatically lined up to aiming spot B, giving us about a 30 degree cut shot, or a half ball hit. So if you want to line up for about a 15 degree hit, you would then make an adjustment until you can see that the inside edge of the cue ball is lined up to aiming spot A, which is going to look something like this, giving us about a three quarter ball hit. And then if you want to line up for about a 45 degree hit, you would make an adjustment until you can see that the inside edge of the cue ball is lined up with aiming spot C, which would look something like this or about a quarter ball hit. Now as far as I'm concerned, when you're going to do those really thin cut shots, you can pretty much ignore starting the center of the cue ball to the outside edge of the object ball. I pretty much just line up one eighth of the inside edge of the cue ball to the outside aiming spot on the object ball, and that looks something like this, which is about a one eighth ball hit. 
Now when we're cutting a ball to the right, everything that we line up is just going to be opposite from what we did to the left. Meaning that we first line up the center of the cue ball to the left edge of the object ball, which looks something like this. And you can already see that the inside edge of the cue ball is lined up to aiming spot B, giving us about a 30 degree cut shot or a half ball hit. Then, if you need about a 15 degree hit, you line up the inside edge of the cue ball to aiming spot A to look something like this, or a three quarter ball hit. And for about the 45 degree hit, you line up the inside edge of the cue ball to aiming spot C to look something like this, giving you about a quarter ball hit. And finally, if you're going to do a really thin cut shot to the right, you line up one eighth of the right edge of the cue ball to the left outside aiming spot of the object ball, and that looks something like this, giving you about that one eighth hit. Now I want you to remember that you kept on hearing me say the word about when I was referring to the cut angles. Because you have to remember that if you do an outside pivot or sweep, you're going to cause the cue ball to cut the object ball a little bit thinner, making your cut angle a little bit greater. And then if you do an inside pivot or sweep, you're going to cause the cue ball to cut the object ball a little bit thicker, making your cut angle a little bit less. Now I'm going to demonstrate a series of shots at a variety of cut angles that will hopefully help you determine when you need to do an inside pivot for a thicker hit or when you need to do an outside pivot for a thinner hit. Now because I have this other camera set up to give you a bird's eye view of the shot, I'm not going to be able to do any types of sweeps. I'm only going to be able to do pivots. Now I hope what you can see I have set up on the table is a set of reinforcement labels that range from 10 degrees on up to 50 degrees to our object ball that we're going to cut to our left. And since we're cutting to the left, that means we're always going to start by lining up the center of the cue ball to the right edge of the object ball. And for our first shot here, this is going to be a 10 degree cut. And because it's a 10 degree cut, we're going to use the 15 degree aiming spot, which means we're lining up center to edge, and then we're going to line up the inside edge of the cue ball to aiming spot A on the object ball. But if I don't do any types of an adjustments, I automatically know that means I'm going to cut the ball too thin. So therefore, I need a thicker hit. So I'm going to do an inside pivot. So I'm going to start my cue, half a tip to the right of the center of the cue ball, and then I start lining up center to the edge, and then I try to line up the edge of the cue ball to aiming spot A. And when I think I have that, I pivot my cue to center, and then I can shoot. For this next shot, we're at a 15 degree cut angle, so we're still going to use the 15 degree aiming spot. Now you might be asking, since we're at a 15 degree cut angle and we're going to use the 15 degree aiming spot, why should I have to pivot in order to get a thicker or a thinner hit? And I actually agree with you on that one. As far as I'm concerned, since this is a 15 degree cut shot, as long as I line up center to edge and then edge to A, I shouldn't have to pivot at all and I can still make the shot. For this next shot, we're at a 20 degree cut angle, and we're still going to use the 15 degree aiming spot. But since we're using the 15 degree aiming spot for our 20 degree cut angle, we should know that our hit is not going to be thin enough, and therefore we have to use an outside pivot as an adjustment. So when I line up for this shot, my tip is going to be half a tip to the left of the center of the cue ball as I line up center to edge and edge to A on the object ball. And when I think I have that, then I can pivot the cue back to the center and then shoot. Now for this shot, we're at a 25 degree cut angle, so we're now in the realm of having to use the 30 degree aiming spot. But since we're at a 25 degree cut angle and we're using the 30 degree aiming spot, our hit is not going to be thick enough. So therefore, we need to do an inside pivot. So when I line up for this shot, the tip of my cue is now going to be at a half tip offset to the right of the center of the cue ball as I line up center to edge and then edge to B, which should automatically happen once you line up center to edge. And when I think I have that, I can pivot back to center and then I can shoot. And now we're at a 30 degree cut angle 
using the 30 degree aiming spot. So as far as I'm concerned, no adjustment is necessary. Just line up center to edge and edge to B and you should be able to make the shot. And now we have a 35 degree cut angle and we're still going to use the 30 degree aiming spot. But we're going to have to do an outside pivot just so we can get that thinner hit. So let's line up half a tip to the left of the center of the cue ball. Line up center to edge and then edge to B, which should be automatic. And when we think we're there, we can pivot our cue back to center and then we can shoot. Now we're at a 40 degree cut angle and we're going to have to start using the 45 degree aiming spot. And since we're at a 40 degree cut angle using the 45 degree aiming spot, we have to do an inside pivot just to get that thicker hit. So let's line up half a tip off to the right of the center of the cue ball, line up center to edge and then edge to C. And when we think we're there, pivot our cue back to center and then shoot. And now here's the 45 degree cut angle using the 45 degree aiming spot. So as far as I'm concerned, no adjustment is necessary. Let's just line up center to edge and then edge to C and then we should be able to make the shot. And now we're at the 50 degree cut angle using the 45 degree aiming spot with an outside pivot. So let's line up half a tip offset to the left of the center of the cue ball. Line up center to edge and then edge to C. Pivot to center and then we should shoot. Now once you're past the 50 degree cut angle, you're pretty much done with the three middle aiming spots and you have to start using the outside aiming spots to line up the shot. Now this shot I have set up here, I'm not entirely sure what the cut angle is because I didn't measure it. If I had to guess, it's probably somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees. So when I line this shot up, I'm not going to bother lining up center to edge. I'm going to line up one eighth of the left edge of the cue ball to one eighth to the right edge of the object ball. And since I want a thin hit, I tend to always use an outside pivot. So let's line up half a tip to the left of the center of the cue ball and then try to line up an eighth of the cue ball to the eighth of the object ball. And if I think I got it, I can pivot to center and then I can shoot. That's not as easy as it looks. Now after all those shots that I demonstrated, I think it's pretty safe to say that a half tip pivot can vary the cut angle about five degrees. Now I know what you must be thinking. You're going to ask me, well, what do you do if the cut angle is like 12 degrees or 32 degrees or 47 degrees or some variation that's in between the five degree increment? Well, let's have a look. You can see here that I have the cue ball set up in between the 10 degree label and the 15 degree label. So it's going to be about 12 to 12 and a half, maybe even 13 degrees to our object ball here. Now, since we haven't passed the 15 degree angle mark yet, we're still going to do an inside pivot to look for a thicker hit. But if I line this up center to edge and then edge to A and then just do a normal pivot, then I should be aware that I'm going to hit the ball thicker than I want. But now that I'm lined up, I'm just going to make one more small adjustment to where I hit the ball a little bit thinner because then now when I pivot, I can make the shot. Now for this shot, I set up the cue ball in between the 15 degree label and the 20 degree label. So we're probably sitting somewhere around 17 to 18 degrees of a cut angle. And since we're past the 15 degree cut angle, we're going to do an outside pivot. But if I line up this shot, half a tip offset to the left center of the cue ball, and then line up center to edge and then edge to A, if I do a normal pivot here, then I'm going to hit the object ball too thin and miss the shot. 
So now I just make one small adjustment to hit the ball a little bit thicker. Then I can pivot to center and I should be able to make the shot. And the same rule is going to apply for all the other variations in between those five degree increments. And before I end today's lesson, let's talk about what I'm sure everybody's interested in, and that's how to apply spin to the cue ball when using the CTE aiming system. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's easy to apply top spin or bottom spin on the cue ball. You just have to raise or lower your bridge hand from the half tip offset. So what we have set up here is a 25 degree cut angle. So I'm going to do an inside pivot using center to edge and then edge to B. So when I line up, I have my half tip offset and then I'm just going to lower or raise my bridge hand. But in this example, I'm going to apply draw on the cue ball. So from here, I'm going to line up center to edge and then edge to B. And when I think I got it, now I'm just going to pivot to center and then I can shoot. And here's a 20 degree cut angle so that we can do an outside pivot using center to edge and then edge to A with top spin. So when we line up, we have our half tip offset to the left of the center of the cue ball and then just raise our bridge hand and start lining up center to edge and then edge to A. And then when I have that, I pivot the cue back to center and then I can shoot. Now, as far as applying side spin on the cue ball, I think that's when it gets a little tricky, especially if you try to spin the cue ball in the direction that you just pivot from. Now, I might have this wrong, but this is what I was able to figure out that seems to work for me. What we have here is a 20 degree cut angle, so that way we can do an outside pivot using center to edge and then edge to A. But if I line up with my half tip offset, it doesn't make any sense for me to pivot to the center only just to pivot back to apply left spin because now I'm back where I started. But what you should see here is that I'm already going to apply left spin on the cue ball using front hand English, which means the cue ball is going to deflect slightly to the right. And since I know that, if I can just make an adjustment to account for that deflection, which I think is about right here, now I can use backhand English if I want to try to apply more left spin and I should still be able to make the shot successfully. I know that might be confusing, but that's all I've got for as far as using inside spin. And finally, let's apply side spin to the cue ball that's away from the pivot direction. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's a lot easier to do because you just apply backhand English and keep on going with your pivot. In other words, we have our 20 degree cut shot again, so we're going to do an outside pivot using center to edge and then edge to A. And when I line up with my half tip offset, when I pivot to center, I'm just going to keep on going so that way I can apply right spin on the cue ball. And that's all I've got for the center to edge aiming system. Now I want you to try to remember though that I'm not trying to say that this is the way you're supposed to execute the CTE aiming system. All I'm trying to do is provide another perspective based on what I was able to learn and what I was able to execute onto the table. Now if there were things I got wrong, then I got them wrong. But if I was able to add more value and you now have a better understanding of how to use the CTE aiming system, then I've accomplished my goal. Now I want to thank everybody for the support I got on my first interpretation of the CTE aiming system. And now with this second interpretation, I hope you have enough information that you might be able to apply it to your game. Now I also want to apologize that it's been about three weeks since I last published a video. Life just caught up to me and I've been a little busy. But I was very happy to see that despite it's been three weeks since my last video, my subscriber count just keeps on going up. And I finally crossed my 25,000 subscriber threshold, so I'm going to do another giveaway. And what I have this time is this very nice 
two by four Predator Urbane case. And I can't begin to tell you how amazing I think this case is because inside of the pockets are more pockets and there are plenty of storage space inside of this. So you might be wondering, how do you win this case? Well, it's not gonna be a challenge like I did on my last giveaway. This is pretty much gonna be a raffle like I've done before. So give this video a thumbs up, put a comment in the comment section below, and make sure that your subscription list is public so when I check your comment, I can see that you're one of my subscribers and you'll be entered into the raffle that I'll have open for a couple of days before I close it off and then I'm gonna announce the winner in my next video. So in the meantime, take care of yourself and don't forget to subscribe.